When you first time start view or open, you notice well where you have it one uh, light source. It's a sunlight, which is actually right here, represented by icon. And overall, you can change direction. But again, this is um, located infinity far away from um, area. So it's meaning if we take the sunlight and bringing very very close to the camera. It does not change actual position, it changes for us how we can manipulate directions, but it does not change how close it is. It is still located in infinity far away from the camera or from the render. So this is a one first of directional light that will be automatically created when you open view and create default scene. Of course, if you save your own personal scene where you may don't have a sunlight, in this case, it won't be present. So we have it beside the sun, we have many different other type of the light source. Let's go down to the left navigation bar and you notice right here we're showing like light bulb. And also we have an arrow which represent if we right click, it will extend and provide different type of light sources for us to select. We have a point light quadric point light, spotlight, quadric spotlight. We have a directional light, which is, will be similar to the sun. We have a light panels and daylight portal. So let's go ahead and draw all of them and look on some properties. Um, before we actually jump in each individuals, one other property each of the light source will have it in common. And this is located in object property, top. So they will represent with a lens flare, they will represent with a volumetric light, or also with a light gel. So let's go ahead and look closer on these properties because they will apply to all lights and after we can jump individually to each different type of light source. The lens flare, which allowed us to create flans from the light source, so we'll go enable, you can see it's up here, or we can go to edit lens flare. And VU provide very intensive and very complex the light type um, lens flare editor. First, you will notice right here we have a light editor open tab, which also represents the same on icon where we have it. Lens flare, gel, volumetric. We also have it shadows, currently is enabled right here. We also have a different type of the lighting model and what objects it can influence or ignore it. So it's different ways. As the lens flare tab first going, we have options enable disable effect of the lens flare, which allowed us without modification any properties and settings, turn on off the lens flare. Also we have the first group, which is located on the right side of a preview. We can use it set default, use it preset default, our general flare intensity, rotation of the flare, and this will affect if you mostly use it um, anamorphic or some other effects. We also have it anamorphism of the lens. Okay, if we need another case is squishing, it depend on. Again, this is all simulating different type of the lens that you may use in the real world. So right here we have the blue and mark strike you can have it. Also different type of the rings. Okay, we can increase actually let's intensify. So right here you can see the ring density coming up. Radius of this ring. We also can increase crystal's random strike which is create the star look effect. Again, we can disable this one preview. We have additional color shifting. Okay, for example, we can switch to the blue. And star filter. The random strike is similar to the star, only you can see it's more symmetrical. And you can specify how many of those strikes you wanted. Okay, and we have it fading over the, off the screen. So when it's going green, if it's too big, and a fade behind the objects. 
um, again, this is the effect when you take your uh, light source and put it behind the object so the lens flare won't be um, appear, so it's make more realistic look. If you still want them, just come in, and sometimes all what you want maybe create this crazy um, space effect with a lens flare without seeing light. You can disable this, hide your light source behind a planet, but you still have it almost this kind of very sci-fi effect coming. So you can play with many of these and fade in fox. Also, right here on the bottom, we have the reflection. And this is a more than just select box. This is actually provide very nice, intensive, and complex editing. So by default, if we click down, you notice right here, we have it already preset for the zoom lens, fixed 35 millimeters, which is a standard for the video or what the IC50 100. And also we have it options to create a custom. When we enable this option, you'll notice we have another screen which provides quite a bit sophisticated type of all those different type of the effect and lens flares we can add it and modify it. So let's go from beginning. For example, right here we have a position for our rings right there in the middle. Okay, where we can specify what type of this ring we wanted color shift if you want to apply any to this right here you can see we have the, our ring size pre-default you can also add additional or modify it from where we have it removed or sort so kind of very complex um, way and you can play around to add a different type of the rings set them positioning between and build your own in some cases you can um, view what is natural or take from real world lenses and simulate it and pre-build those lenses directly here save it as your own preset and after it will be available for you to use it from type of the lens which you can see when you preload it it will change some of this of course your random strike and this will affect as well will override some of your type of the lens you set it but again you can modify it and add so it's a very um, interesting effect if you want to simulate real world lenses and it's um, even interface look like very simple but you have a very complex way to pre-build your lenses